What's going on everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg and today we're going to be reviewing your resumes. In my very last video, we walked through how to create a data analyst resume and I asked you to send me your resume if you wanted it to be included in a future video. Well, this is that future video. So thank you so much to everybody who sent me a resume. I have way too many to actually include in just one video. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to make this into a series and do several videos of this. But if your resume wasn't featured in today's video, I'll try to include it in the next video. And if you still wanna send in your resumes, I will leave my email in the description so you can still do that. With that being said, let's get into it. So let's get into our very first resume. All right, so let's start at the top. We have the contact section and that looks clean, looks very good. No problems with that at all. Let's jump down to the objective section. It says an entry level data analyst with three years of experience working for CarSense, I'm guessing some type of car company. Uh, currently looking for a role I can implement my logical. All right, so this isn't bad. Uh, this is supposed to be an elevator pitch where you really quickly tell where you're at and where you're going. So this is good. I think it could be fluffed up a little bit, add a little bit more meat. So we are gonna come back to that one. But let's jump down to the skill section. The skill section to me is probably the most important section that you start out with. I, the objective section isn't as important in my eyes. So the skill section is where I think you really get to highlight who you are. In this skill section, in the technical skills, there's Excel and Mathematica, Calculus, and then Soft Skills section. Okay, the first thing that I'm noticing is that there's not a ton of data analyst skills in here. So in this technical skills section, there's no Python or SQL or SPSS, it's just Excel. They do have statistics, which is really good. Um, I don't know how I feel about this soft skills section. I personally don't like a soft skills section. I would just take that out. But if you are determined on keeping that in, yeah, it looks like this could be just kind of a short resume. So if you do wanna keep this in just to fluff up your resume, that's totally fine. I might just add a few more things on top of it to kind of fill it out as a section. The thing that actually really does concern me though is this technical sales section. Uh, you have some analyst work below. We haven't gotten to that yet, but I can, you know, I read that in the objective, but I don't see any SQL. So that's concerning, and I don't see any programming languages. You don't have to have a programming language, but that's really, really you know, helpful. So there's no Python um, or R if you wanna do R. But that's something that is concerning if you're trying to submit this as your resume to get a data analyst job. Uh, they have a certification section for a data analytics certification to Cornell University. Very cool, I have no problem with that at all. I think I would move this down to the bottom. If you have your education at the bottom, try to clump or group those together. So a certification would probably go underneath your education. So right here. Uh, let's go back up to the work experience. Again, work experience is extremely important. Probably one of the most important things. It shows what you've done before and what you'll bring to the table uh, in your current job or if you get hired into that job. So for the analyst position at CarSense, they are generating daily and weekly reports, very good. Consolidating and aggregating historical sales data in a CRM, okay. Uh, troubleshooting and innovating new tactics. So this job seems like a really relevant job. They got some work with CRMs and aggregating data, all really good things to learn. I think that CRM work could definitely go up into this technical, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but you can definitely say that you work in CRMs. A lot of companies do use CRMs. Um, let's go down to this manager section. So arrange and assign tasks to peers, maintain, preparing. Um, okay, so I think that this section is good, although I think I'd go back and I would add a little bit more information into this section, a little bit more quantitative information. You know, what kind of impact did you make on this? Did you increase sales? Did you decrease, you know, whatever? Anything like that would be really interesting to see and I think would help this section just a little bit. So now let's go down to the education section. It looks like they have a degree in physics. So very relevant, very good degree to have. So overall, I think it's a really good start, although I definitely think it has some work before you're gonna start submitting it for actual jobs. The number one thing that I would say is you have to get SQL on the resume. Just learn the basics, get it on your resume, because if you don't and you try to apply on like LinkedIn, if you submit it and it doesn't have SQL on it, you'll probably get filtered out and it won't actually get to the hiring managers at all for them to even look at it. So learn the basics, put it on your resume. Uh, other than that, you know, it's a good format. You have a lot of good information. It just needs a little bit of work. 
So now let's get into our next resume. So up top we have the contact section, a little bit of blue. I have no problem with that at all. The very first thing that we look at is the education section. And it looks like they have a business degree or business analytics degree. That's really good to have. Oh, well, they haven't graduated yet, but they will have a business analytics degree. And that is a very good degree to have, very relevant to this career path. Yeah, that looks great. The education section looks really good. It says a little bit of the coursework that they've gone through. Let's get into the professional experience. Uh, they were an accounting internship. Let's see what kind of work that they were doing there. Uh, right, so uh, working on spreadsheets, working on databases, doing data entry. These are all really relevant things to a data analyst job. And even though it's for an accounting internship, it definitely can apply. You know, you're working with data, you're working with software and computers and databases. So really relevant work. Let's scroll down and look at this one. Delivery driver at a Chinese restaurant. I love Chinese food. I have no problem with this being on your resume. I think once you actually land that first job as a data analyst, you're probably gonna take that one off first uh, because it definitely is not relevant to a data analyst job, but you know, you're right out of college. So I, you know, you gotta put something on there. I don't have an issue with this being on there at all. Let's look at this next one. A mechanic apprentice at an elevator company. You have some pretty cool jobs. I like you know, your job experience. Again, this one probably isn't super relevant, but the same thing as the first one, which was, or the second one, you know, you're right out of college or you're in college. And so you're not gonna have a ton of jobs that are like, you know, data analyst internship, junior data analyst. You're gonna have these kind of jobs. And so that's very expected uh, when you're first coming out of college. At the very bottom, they have the skills section, uh, but let's look at that. SQL, SPSS, Tableau, Microsoft. Okay, first off, already your skill section is really good. This needs to be much higher up than the very bottom. You want that to be probably one of the first things that they see, maybe after your education since you know, you're in college, but do education than your skills. Skills needs to be higher up. I, I don't th think that it should be at the bottom. All right, spreadsheets. I'm not exactly sure what spreadsheets means. You know, are you working with pivot tables? Are you working with data? I don't exactly know what you're using that for. So maybe be a little bit more descriptive or be more specific in what spreadsheets actually means. And they did include, um, they did include this section right here, which is soft skills. Again, I'm not a huge soft skills person. I don't think you need it, but you know, for this resume, since you know you're right out of college, I, it's, it's a filler. I don't think this needs to be there. And if it is there, I think maybe be a little bit more descriptive. Critical thinking, quick learning, good communication. I think the things that are really important are team players someone who's collaborative, someone who's a leader. Those are probably the more action items that I might put if I did have a soft skill section. So, you know, that's something to, something to think about. The big thing that I would say is that I think the skill section needs to be a lot higher. If you have SQL, SPSS, and Tableau, right there, those skills are extremely relevant. And so I would highlight those right at the top. So now let's look at our next resume. The first thing that I'm noticing is that it says report developer right up top. I'm guessing that this person is a report developer and wants to become a data analyst, in which case update that to data analyst. Let's look at the profile section. Yeah, it even says it right here. It says report developer. So I would update that to data analyst again. Demonstrate written and oral communication skills, adaptable. Okay, so the very first thing I'm noticing is that this section is really just generic and doesn't really tell who you are and where you're going. Again, this is supposed to be an elevator pitch. So this section I would update, try to think if you were on an elevator pitch with a CEO, what would you tell them? You know, I don't think this would be exactly what you tell them, although it is very verbose and it adds a lot of, uh, you know, depth to the resume, it doesn't really read well. So I would highly recommend updating that. Let's just keep going down the line. Uh, we have the contact details. All right, so they have their LinkedIn, their GitHub, and another GitHub. So for technical skills, we have SQL, Python, JavaScript, Node, PHP. So a lot of really good skills, very difficult skills, programming language, frameworks, uh, lots of difficult things. It looks like this person was probably a front-end developer, is what I'm guessing just based off the skill set. So I don't have a problem with these skills right here being on there. It's just that they probably aren't as relevant as they are as the SQL or the Python. 
you might consider pairing it back a little bit or adding you know some things that are more relevant to data analysis like excel or something like that but overall fantastic technical skills this is really impressive now let's go down to other skills project coordination writing and research okay i have no problem with that uh, i will say that this research is a larger font but that's just me being nitpicky you know not really a huge feedback right there okay academic profile let's look at this so they have a bachelor's of art in anthropology very cool uh, from northern arizona and then an associate degree in anthropology okay so kind of like me not really a relevant degree but you have the skills and the skills are what is really important let's go back up because i want to look at this experience and it looks like they're working at a software and solutions company doing advanced oh, doing advanced business intelligence uh, that is really relevant work we have full-time business intelligence analysts where i work and that's what they do they create reports all day long um, some of the skills okay i like that you listed some of the skills in here so you're using sql sql yeah main, maintaining views that's great generating revenue being specific I really, really like this first job. Even though it's a developer position where you're doing reports, all the work that you're doing in this is probably really relevant to a data analyst job. Maybe not this work right here, but that's just extra sales that you're gonna get if somebody decides to hire you. So really, really relevant, I love that. Let's go on down to this data analyst position. Okay, so it looks like at one point they were a data analyst and then they became a report developer. It looks like now they're trying to go back into data analytics. Maybe they didn't enjoy the business intelligence reports as much. I don't know. But let's look at this one. So, oh, are they, is that the same company? No, different company, uh, Red School Software, another software company. So cleaning data, processing data, analyzing data. This is all extremely relevant things. Um, working with client databases, extremely, extremely relevant work. And then, yeah, using SQL. I love this. You already have experience as a data analyst, so this is really relevant work. It's gonna look awesome to somebody who wants to hire you. I was a contracted project coordinator position, doing some consulting work, working with project managers with for reports and troubleshooting field problems. This is really, really good work. Uh, people who are project coordinators are often very, very detail-oriented and are able to organize things very well. So this is very relevant work. Overall, uh, just taking a look at it as a whole, I would just say make those updates to make it more data analyst specific. I think the thing that means the most work is the personal profile, which again, is not the most important section. So the important section, which were your skills and your employment experience were really well done. So I think that this resume is probably the best one that we've seen so far and the one with the most skill sets. I do not think that this person is gonna have much trouble finding a job as a data analyst. So I think it's gonna be the last resume that we do today. If you wanna be part of a future video, send your resume to me at my email. I will have that in the description if you wanna be part of that. But let's get into this one. So let's look at the contact section. This is probably the most unique contact section that we've looked at today. Um, they have like these little symbols for each thing. I think that's really clever. I have no problem with that. I like how it looks. I think it looks nice. And the very first thing that we're looking at is experience. So just glancing down, we have a BI Analyst 2, BI Analyst 1, Risk Analyst, all analyst work. So I'm sure that this person has a lot of experience, but let's just skim through these real quick. They even highlighted some of the things that they worked with, like Power BI and SQL. So that's really relevant work. Um, they're working in SQL Server databases. I think potentially adding a little bit more quantitative information, you know, what kind of impact did you have on the company? You did say you built some things. Um, I'm sure that did have an impact. It's just, you know, quantitative information really stands out. Again, not huge feedback, that is really good. All right, and let's look at this business analyst one. All right, it looks like they were using ClickSense for their KPI dashboards, very cool. Using T-SQL, SQL Server. All right, and down here they have some quantitative information. That's awesome, that's kind of what I was looking for. Very useful information to have. Then there's a risk analyst down here, again using ClickSense, 
Power Query, okay, so that's another skill. I like that he's adding a lot of the skills into his actual job descriptions because he's gonna have it in his job descriptions, but he's also gonna, probably gonna have it over in his skill section. We haven't looked at that yet, but I'm just guessing. But really good. I really like already how this is formatted. It's formatted really well. So let's look at this objective section. Take part in the organization's data using SQL BI tools. Okay, so this is the first big feedback that I would have. I don't think that this is a particularly great objective section. I think it definitely needs some work. So remember the elevator pitch. Where are you? Where are you going? If you had 30 seconds to kind of sell yourself to somebody who's gonna give you a million dollar job, how are you gonna convince them that you're the person who they need to hire? That's kind of what this section is all about. So uh, I think this is the first thing that needs a little bit of work. Let's go down to the skills and strengths. SQL Server, SSIS, ETL, Power BI, clicks. This is all really good stuff. Really, really useful skills. Um, strong analytical skills, problem solver, self learner, agile methodology. If you don't know what agile methodology is, uh, I talked about it in a previous video, but it's a way that companies block out their work. Uh, what we use at ours is called Scrum, and then we do two week sprints. So every two weeks, we block out what kind of work we're going to do for those two weeks. So a lot of really big companies use Agile methodology, and so that's nice to have on a resume, so I really like that. Let's look at education. They have a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. Very impressive. And industrial and systems engineering. And one degree is from Brazil, one's in the USA. That's awesome. Very, very cool. And then down here is a section on languages. Very nice. I used to teach TOEFL, so that's really a really, really good score. You must be extremely proficient in English and Portuguese and Spanish. Being bilingual will never hurt you, okay? Speaking multiple languages is never gonna hurt, and putting that on a resume is probably gonna be a bonus because if somebody wants somebody who speaks Portuguese, you might be at the top of the list now, whereas maybe you before you weren't at the top of the list, I don't know. But that's really cool to have. I like that that's on your resume. Overall, I think this is the best resume that we've seen today. I think the experience is fantastic. The skills are really, really strong. Great engineering background. The only feedback that I'd really give is in the objective section, just reworking that to, like I said, say where you are, where you're going. And after that, I think you have a really, really good resume. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys are what made this video possible. I appreciate every single person who sent me their resume. If I didn't get to your resume in this video, I will absolutely try to get it into the next video. Again, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.